It seemed like the Starliner spacecraft would finally open the door to its heavenly journey on May 6th, but it all turned into darkness. Starliner scrubbed yet again. So why? What happened? And when's the next launch window? Why doesn't NASA focus on Dragon and skip Boeing Starliner? How did Elon react? Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Boeing had a chance to restore some redemption to its tarnished name with a scheduled launch of the first crewed Starliner mission from Florida. A pioneering capsule designed to revolutionize human space exploration activities. However, despite this excitement from NASA, hundreds of Boeing employees, and even a Godspeed wish from Elon Musk, the flight ran into trouble. The issue stemmed from a valve in the rocket's upper stage, prompting mission managers to issue a check command just two hours before liftoff. It was a frustrating disappointment for Commander Barry Butch Wilmore and co-pilot Sunita Williams, who were in the process of strapping in for launch when the scrub was announced. The moment brought to mind one of Wilmore's favorite sayings, you'd rather be on the ground wishing you were in space than in space and wishing you were on the ground. Now, NASA has announced a new launch date of May 17th to make a second attempt to get the Starliner off the ground. Mission managers spent Tuesday reviewing what caused the oxygen dump valve on the rocket Centaur upper stage to chatter during the stages of fueling. According to United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno, the valve may have exceeded its 200,000 cycle lifespan, meaning it will need to be completely replaced. This will require ULA to roll the Atlas V rocket back to its hangar about a third of a mile south of the launch pad, ruling out any chance of a mission this weekend. Bruno said similar valve trouble had occurred in years past on a few other Atlas rockets launching satellites. It was quickly resolved by turning the troublesome valves off and back on. But the company has stricter flight rules for astronaut flights, prohibiting valve recycling when a crew is on board. To be honest, valve issues are still a common challenge across many different vehicles. Starliner had to face delays in 2021 due to valve problems, and NASA's SLS rocket was scrubbed multiple times for similar reasons before the Artemis II mission launch. Even Starship and Dragon rockets have not been immune to issues related to this component. Anything with a state change, Musk said. The valve problem affected Starliner's launch schedule, something Boeing had long hoped to execute on time. The humiliation for them seemed to have reached its peak as Starliner has suffered years of delays and exceeded its budget by over a billion dollars, and now they must quickly get this new capsule flying. Quickly showcasing how strong and reliable Starliner is compared to SpaceX's Crew Dragon. But unfortunately for Starliner, Crew Dragon seems not just a competitor, but a dominator. While Starliner struggles with its technical woes, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a proven spacecraft, has ferried 50 astronauts, space travelers, and civilians into orbit on 13 flights, including 12 missions to the space station. Moreover, with some exclusive features, SpaceX is nearly unbeatable, including Starliner. Elon Musk has demonstrated this on two fronts, cost and schedule. He noted that SpaceX completed its missions four years earlier than Boeing and at $1.6 billion cheaper, attributing the delays to what he sees as too many non-technical managers at Boeing. In contrast, Dragon continues to build on its impressive track record. Elon Musk also affirmed that the world doesn't need another capsule. What matters is fully reusable rockets and spacecraft. Indeed, that's the trend in space business today and in the future, with the emphasis on a reusability and cost reduction pushed even further to the point of where space travel tickets won't be out of reach for ordinary Joes like us. Elon Musk's statement is like a cold splash of water on the Boeing Starliner, especially considering that both the Atlas V and Vulcan launch vehicles are not reusable. While Starliner itself is advertised to be reusable up to 10 times, it's still on the ground, so it's difficult to objectively assess whether this will be feasible or not. But even if Starliner could be reused up to 10 times, overall, Boeing decisively lost the commercial crew space race, and it proved to be a very costly affair. Do you agree with that? please let us know in the comments down below. So, how did Boeing, the gold standard in human space travel for decades, fall so far behind SpaceX? There were clear technical reasons for the delays. During Starliner's first attempt to fly to the ISS without a crew, software errors forced it to return to Earth early. Then, a series of issues, including dysfunctional valves in the propulsion system, caused further delays. 
However, delays or errors all stem from underlying issues. The commercial crew program represents a major shift in how NASA sees its contractors. Going forward, from space stations to the moon to Mars, NASA wants to foster a new competitive economy in space. Rather than the entity running everything, the agency wants to be one of many customers on company space stations, spaceships, and lunar bases. That's part of why Crew Dragon and Starliner are on fixed-price contracts. NASA set the price, then SpaceX and Boeing had to build and fly the spaceships to NASA's specifications. After all, the companies would have other customers on their spaceships. They weren't building them just for the government. So it's on them if costs start to balloon. That's an adjustment for Boeing as a legacy contractor for the Department of Defense and NASA, aerospace expert George Neal previously said. Its leaders were accustomed to operating in a cost-plus environment, where Boeing could bill the government for all its cost and earn a fee on top. Cost overruns and delays were not the company's problem, but NASA's. Suddenly, with a fixed price, it's up to the company to figure out what risks to take in terms of new technologies and new approaches, said Neal, who's a former associate administrator of the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Adjusting the fixed price model was a challenge for Boeing, which has long held the luxury of moving slowly. Boeing has struggled to adapt to this environment. In the past, when it came to intricate space endeavors, Boeing was accustomed to utilizing external funding sources. However, with the Starliner project, every dollar spent directly impacts their profits or, in the worst case, exacerbates their losses. Consequently, Boeing allocated fewer resources to Starliner than what was necessary for its comprehensive development. Scrappy SpaceX, however, was in its natural environment. In hindsight, it seems clear that the strain of operating in a fixed-price environment was the fundamental cause behind Boeing's many struggles with Starliner and similar government procurement programs, to the point that the company's Defense, Space, and Security Unit may be hard-pressed to compete for fixed-price contracts again. In 2023, the company's CEO said Boeing would never do them again. A Boeing spokesperson pushed back against the notion that the company would no longer compete for fixed-price contracts. However, the company believes such contracts should be used appropriately for mature products. There's a big irony in all this. By bidding for commercial crew, Boeing helped kickstart America's commercial space industry. But in the years ahead, its space unit may be swallowed up by a younger company is able to bid lower prices, deliver more, and move faster. It must be said that Boeing losing to a faster competitor in the commercial space race is an inevitable part of operating in Boeing's space rocket industry. However, the company's overcome challenges and is nearing a higher milestone. It's never worth criticizing if Boeing succeeds. Therefore, let's extend good wishes for the upcoming launch of Starliner, even if it's delayed from the original plan. It's all the effort of thousands of engineers and technicians that have turned this dream into a reality. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe so that we can have more motivation to release videos every day. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and catch you next time. Bye.